Imagine this, the world's two most populous nations, both nuclear powers, going head-to-head -head in a fierce battle for air supremacy that could decide the fate of Asia. As tensions simmer between India and China, one question looms large. Can India's Air Force truly take on the mighty dragon in the skies? The India-China rivalry is no secret. For decades, these Asian giants have jostled for regional influence, their border disputes simmering like a pot waiting to boil over. But amidst the heated rhetoric and occasional skirmishes, a silent arms race has been underway. And its ultimate showdown may unfold not on land, but in the air. You see, both nations have been building up their aerial arsenals at a frenetic pace. China's People's Liberation Air Force now boasts a staggering fleet of over 2,000 combat aircraft. India's Air Force, the IAF, has around 900. But as any Top Gun fan could tell you, it's not just about quantity. It's about quality, skill, and tactical acumen. And that's where India might just have a few aces up its sleeve. So strap in and get ready to soar, because we're about to reveal the four ways Indian air power could outmaneuver the Chinese dragon if push ever comes to shove. But first, let's set the stage for this epic aerial face-off. For years, India and China have been locked in a tense border standoff along the Himalayas. Flashpoints like Doklam, Galwan Valley, and Pangong Lake have become household names. But while the troops stare each other down on the ground, a bigger game is afoot in the skies above. China's Air Force has been on a modernization overdrive, inducting cutting-edge fighters like the J-20 stealth jet and the J-16 strike aircraft. They've also got a dense network of air defense systems and radar stations that can track targets deep into Indian airspace. But India's no slouch either. The IAF has its own elite fleet, spearheaded by the Russian-built Su-30 MKI air superiority fighter and the French Rafale multi-role jet. They've also got the homegrown Tejas, a nimble little fighter that's fast becoming the IAF's darling. So who would win if these aerial armadas actually clashed, while the China might have the numbers? The IAF could punch well above its weight by leveraging four key advantages, and that's what we'll dive into next. First up, let's talk about the IAF's trump card, the qualitative edge. Numbers aren't everything in an air war. What matters more is the quality of your jets and the skill of your pilots. And on that front, the IAF has a definite edge. The IAF's premier fighter, the Russian-built Su-30 MKI, is a beast of a jet that can outmaneuver any Chinese fighter in a dogfight. With its massive payload, jaw-dropping climb rate, and advanced avionics that can track multiple targets simultaneously, the Su-30 MKI is a force to be reckoned with. And let's not forget the IAF's latest addition, the French Rafale multi-role fighter. Armed with the deadly Meteor missile that can shoot down enemy jets from over 100 kilometers away, the Rafale is a game-changer in the IAF's arsenal. Sure, China has the J-20 stealth fighter, but it's still plagued by engine troubles and the IAF's future AMCA stealth jet could negate that advantage. Plus, India's existing fleet is nothing to scoff at. The bottom line? In a head-to-head -head fight, the IAF's top jets could run circles around their Chinese counterparts. As one IAF veteran puts it, the Su-30 is the IAF's ace in the hole against China. Next, let's dive into the IAF's second ace, operational expertise. A jet is only as good as the pilot flying it, and that's where the IAF truly shines. Indian pilots are among the most combat-hardened in the world, with the IAF having fought in multiple conflicts since World War II. From the 1965 and 1971 wars with Pakistan to the Kargil conflict in 1999, IAF pilots have shown time and again that they've got the right stuff. They train relentlessly, clocking in hundreds of hours in realistic combat drills and honing their skills in the world's toughest terrains, from the Himalayan heights to the deserts of Rajasthan. What's more, the IAF regularly trains with the best air forces in the world, from the U.S. to France to the U.K. They even take part in the prestigious red flag exercises in the U.S., where they routinely outshine their Western counterparts. The result? A crop of pilots who are technically proficient, tactically adept, and battle-ready. As a U.S. Air Force general once remarked, the IAF is one of the most professional air forces in the world. Their pilots are top-notch. The third ace up the IAF's sleeve is something the Chinese can't match. The high ground advantage. In an India-China air war, 
the Himalayas won't just be a scenic backdrop. They'll be a key battleground. And that's where the IAF could leverage its biggest ace, the high ground. You see, the IAF has been operating in the mountains for decades. They've got a network of air bases and advanced landing grounds in the Himalayas that give them a huge tactical advantage. From these high-altitude launch pads, IAF jets can swoop down on Chinese forces in the valleys below, while Chinese fighters struggle to take off with heavy weapon loads in the thin mountain air. What's more, the IAF has honed its skills in mountain warfare through years of experience and special training. They've got helicopter units that can insert special forces behind enemy lines and C-130 that can airdrop supplies to troops in remote outposts. As one IAF planner puts it, in the mountains, we can bring air power to bear in ways the Chinese can't match. The Himalayas are our great equalizer. Finally, let's talk about the IAF's fourth and final ace, strategic partnerships. India's ace in the hole could be its friends in high places. Over the past decade, India has been building strategic partnerships with air powers like the US, France, Israel, and Japan, and these ties could tilt the scales in India's favor in an air war with China. Take the US, for instance. The two countries have been holding joint air exercises like COPE India and Red Flag, where IAF pilots train alongside their American counterparts. The US has also been selling India cutting-edge weapons like the Apache Attack Helicopter and the Chinook Heavy Lift Chopper. Then there's France which has supplied India with the game-changing Rafale jet and the deadly scalp cruise missile. Israel has been helping India boost its drone and air defense capabilities. These partnerships give India access to top-notch training, technology, and intelligence that could be force multipliers in an air war. As an IAF chief said, our strategic partnerships are a big part of our deterrent against China. So there you have it, the four aces up the IAF's sleeve. But what does this mean for the future of Asia's skies? Make no mistake, the India-China air rivalry is no sideshow. It's part of a bigger geopolitical chessboard that stretches from the Himalayas to the South China Sea. As these two giants jockey for control of the Indo-Pacific, air power will be the ultimate arbiter. China knows this, which is why it's building artificial islands with airstrips in the South China Sea and setting up anti-access bubbles to keep rivals out. India is responding by bolstering its air and naval presence in the Indian Ocean and teaming up with partners like the US, Japan and Australia in the Quad Alliance. In this great game, the IAF's four aces, quality, skill, geography and alliances, could be India's trump cards. By leveraging these strengths, India can ensure that it won't be outgunned or outmaneuvered in Asia's high-stakes air contest. But the IAF can't rest on its laurels. It needs to keep honing its edge, inducting new technologies and deepening its partnerships. Because in the unforgiving arena of air combat, you're only as good as your last dogfight. So what do you think? Does India have a shot against China in an air war? What other advantages could India bring to a future air war with China? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video informative, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more great military content. As always, thanks for watching.